Hi, and welcome back to Scholastically Natalie, where we are going to do a book review slash book talk on Wolf Brother by Michelle Paver. I know that I've been reading you the first three chapters recently, so I figured now after I've read the entire book, which was a wonderful trip to nostalgia, <laughs> I can tell you about it. So on the little blurb on the back of the book, it says the epic journey of boy and wolf begins. 6,000 years ago, evil stalks the land. According to legend, only 12-year-old Torak and his wolf cub companion can defeat it. Their journey takes them through deep forests, across giant glaciers, and into dangers they never imagined. Torak and Wolf are terrified of their mission, but if they do not battle to save their world, who will? Sorry, that felt really dramatic. <laughs> um... You know, the typical YA uh, description. <laughs> okay, so I have a couple, two good quotes for you. He knew that the high mountains were far in the east, beyond the deep forest, and that they curved from north to south, arcing out of the forest like the spine of an enormous whale. He knew that the world spirit was said to live in the northernmost mountain, but no one had ever gotten close to it, for the spirit always beat them back with howling blizzards and treacherous rockfalls from page 42. Um, I just especially like this quote because it really does establish how well like the setting and the world building is done because in most you know fantasies when people have devised their own continents it's really easy to get real confused real fast when people start going, ooh, this is to the west, this is to the east, this is to the south. Um, and so just having us go, yes, <laughs> you're going to climb a mountain, and you're going to go the furthest to the north that you can. <laughs> um, and plus, you know, having the added description of, you know, there's a forest um, in front of the mountain, and you know, there's also additional descriptions of, like mires and wetlands. And I think it's all in all very well done, and I did actually get a pretty good sense of where we were and how far we were going. And then we also have from page 183, a shuddering growl, so close that she heard the wet champ of jaws, smelled the reek of slaughter. Then the daylight was blotted out and an eye held hers, blacker than basalt, yet churning with fire, it drew her, it wanted her. Again, just great writing just the emotions expressed and the description. Really great. <laughs> um, so to me, I think the series is underappreciated. I know it's marked as like a national bestseller, but when I was talking about it to my friend, who's also a giant book nerd, she'd never heard of it. <gasps> How dare she? Um, I did actually see somewhere that they had sold the rights to make a movie of it in like 2014 and now in 20, well, back in 2020, um, there were some rumors about making an ATV show instead with Lionsgate. So there's some hope, um, but I'm also a little bit worried because, you know, there is a wolf involved in a lot of the series, and especially in this first book, and who knows what's gonna happen to poor little old him. Also, you know, I don't know, I'm always leery about making books into TVs and movies because sometimes it's not done well. Um, but this is such a great ent entry into fantasy, into young adult fantasy especially. Um, one, because it's such a different environment. I rarely see any sort of tribal Native American, like, rustic fantasy settings. It's mostly centered around, like, Middle Ages, king stuff, queen stuff, dragons, you know, the things that are typical of the fantasy genre. So to have this be a more retro Native American inspired series, oh, beautiful, perfect, I love it. Um, and from the descriptions of the author in the back of the book and her writing process, she seems to have been pretty respectful of culture. She makes it explicitly clear that this is not a reflection of any specific Native American culture. She's not drawing on anything that is, like, you know, specific to a tribe or anything that is specific from them. It's her own kind of, like, fantasy inspired by how Native Americans acted, which I think is, again, a great touch. Um, she's gone to places that hold the same kind of land as her fantasy setting. She's experienced some of the things she describes, which I think is great. Um, and so that is my first point. Awesome world building. You understand what these things that she's talking about are without an explicit 
description in the beginning, and then when they are further explained to you later on, you still know what they are. Like, I've never gotten an explicit <laughs> description of Walled Soul, Clan Soul, like, oh gosh, what was the last one? Like, I don't remember what the last one is, I'm so sorry, there's three souls. Um, I never had to get an explicit description of it, right? Um, but when we find out how demons are made and what the clan soul means, you then imply what the rest of it was because you have that additional description of what the world soul is broken up so it's not just an info dump and that's just so well done. And the clans and getting to encounter one clan and like hearing of other stuff on the side, it all works together to show you how the clans are. Which again, I appreciate. Um, second, there's great characterization and emotional journeys. I think I have like this image in my head of like YA stuff being like not good at emotions, but in this it shows a really great process of like grief and determination and like accepting those around you and kind of like finding your place in the world. Um, all of that's so well done and the emotional journey of learning to let things go and being able to move on, it's so well done. Um, third, we have a good and natural relationship that advances between the main characters. Not a relationship, like, romantically, but a friendship, um, which normally you don't get to see that as well because it goes from hostile to kind of like grudging respect to actual friends, um, and I do enjoy that. And I think it's portrayed very well for this series. Whereas you don't normally get to see that kind of progression, um, which I think is cool. And I mean, the girl that he meets up with, Ren, she does not give you a good impression at first. She doesn't give you a favorable impression. So learning to kind of like her, or at least appreciate her along with Torak, is great. It's so well done. We get to redeem this character. Um, and even the secondary antagonist of the book, they are also redeemed. Like, all these people, even background characters, they are shown to be intricate, which is nice. <laughs> um, foreshadowing, yes. I know it's coming up, because I, I will admit, I do remember faintly some of the ending from the last book, because that was the most recent one I read even all those years ago. And the foreshadowing, mm, solid, delicious. Like, you already know by the end of the book, that if the series continues, you will be seeing more of the the overarching antagonist, I guess you could say. Um, but oh my gosh, the foreshadowing, like the little hints that have been laid out this entire book when I'm like, oh my gosh, I do actually know this. <laughs> it was great. It was, it's so good. The foreshadowing is so good. And I'm honestly kind of excited for me to read the rest of the series because I fully intend to now that I finished that first one. Are you kidding me? I remember Soul Leader as being my favorite one. Um, I'm always a sucker for kidnapping. I don't know why. It sounds weird, but as a plot point, it's one of my favorite things. Mostly because I think it puts the main character in a vulnerable position and then having them fight their way, talk their way, get their way out of that. It's just exciting. <laughs> and... I just distinctly remember that and like there's orcas and stuff so like it's gonna be cool i remember that one it's neat <laughs> so i want to read the rest of the series now and just get that appreciation back for it um also the ending is so well done and if michelle paver had wanted to she could have left this at this first book she didn't have to write more um she definitely set it up for that with the whole soul leader stuff and you know I don't want to spoil it um, because I want you to read it because it's really, really good. Um, but she sets it up so that she could have continued the series, but had she wanted to, she could have left it at book one as well um, because you get that sort of kind of bittersweet, um, they're still out there ending that is so nice to have. Um, and then again, such attention to detail with the intricate ways that you would, you know, slaughter and repurpose a deer, um, the ways that you might screw it up because you're inexperienced, um, things like napping flint for arrows, they can't do it because their hands aren't developed enough to actually do that. Like, such small things that she could have skipped over, that she could have just not included. Um, but that served to make the world building so much more, to make this universe and these characters 
so rich. Um, really the only thing the story would have lost for it is just an additional sense of desperation um, that still could have been achieved even without those small details, and I, I just appreciate that she included them. Um, and then lastly we have the Nanuak stuff. I don't know if I'm saying that right, I'm so sorry. Um, because within this story of having this overarching end goal, we also have a three-part quest in order to reach that end goal. It's very similar to the first book of Percy Jackson in that way, where like, we have to make these smaller stops before we get to the big battle. Um, which I think is pretty valid because they still tie into the character development. Um, they still teach us things about the characters. And they're also cool. <laughs> Um, but I think personally it shows, like, at first you're kind of like, oh, whatever, this stuff's kind of weird, but like, it feels kind of forced in there. And then later, it ties back in by Torak using it in a way you don't think he's going to in showing the intelligence he has and the willingness he has to risk himself now against something that terrifies him. And I I love that character progression. I think this book really does a great overarching like emotional journey of complete and utter terror to kind of like accepting the fate if it happens and still trying to avoid it, but still be willing to sacrifice. Um, and I definitely enjoy it. And so ultimately, I think this is an awesome book. Um, 10 out of 10 would recommend read. It is a young adult book, but honestly, it was just nice to read. It made me happy. I will admit I did at parts kind of like skim stuff because I didn't pay super close attention to the days passing and stuff, so I wasn't quite sure how long we had been doing things. But that's on me as being a poor reader <laughs> with poor attention to detail. Um, numbers confuse me. <laughs> But I think it's a great story, maybe if not for you, if for somebody younger in your life or somebody who's just getting back into reading. It's great. I love it. Um, the point of view chapters from the view of Wolf, stunning. I love them. That's what made me remember this series so well, is the point of view from Wolf and just the unusual but awesome fantasy setting. I think it's something that anybody who has been reading fantasy and grimdark or medieval or dragon fantasy can appreciate because it's something different. It's something unusual. Much like how I really enjoyed The Thief when I got to it because it was a different take on all that royalty stuff. Um, I appreciate The Wolf Brother that much more because it is such a large break from that kind of universe and that kind of trope, which I think is always worth reading when it is done well. And this was done incredibly well. So, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you'd like to leave a like, if you have read this book or you want to read this book or you have some other sort of thoughts about this book, leave a comment. And if you'd like to hear more from me, please hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Scholastically Natalie is